way of doing things is the course way. Nice big wire wheel, another good wire wheel there. Getting in the small bits. And of course, the old flexo flappy. Another bit of a tip, don't sand the welds all the way down. I have seen that before where people have gone for that nice seamless look. Don't do that. It's the end of the week already, I'm back. So last week we got this all stripped down, sanded, ground, wire wheeled. All I'm doing is degreasing it. Super cheap, heavy duty degreaser. Now I've still got a bit more crud up inside the axle tubes. I'm gonna stuff the turkey. So to prepare this turkey, you take a rag, preferably a white or a light colored rag, not a black one, because then you can see what the hell's coming out. So yeah, get yourself like a, the old oats broom, shove him up the axle tube. Oh yeah, yeah that's nice. Get your hand right up inside it. Stuff the shit out of it. And then I like to dip that right on there. Welcome back. Still with a bit more prep work where the kingpin baron goes. A little bit of rust in there. Pretty much a very tiny flapper wheel. Get down in there, clean that out. Just taking any sharp edges where I've got to put that seal in. There were some there from the previous owner. And when they bought the vehicle, there was a toolbox in the back of the tray. And it was full of like front end parts, half a hub kit and a few other odds and ends. And straight away it was like, okay, they've obviously done a repair. And what I found was one of the hubs, which would be the left hand, there was oil and grease and shit all through the inner rim. So the axle seal was leaking. When I've got it apart, the circlip on the CV sharp was still flopping around inside the locking hub. So the axle's just been floating. So it's destroyed the sealing surface of the axle, hence why I bought new CV sharps. And there was a couple of burrs here, so I'd say when they've gone to take that seal out, not using the proper gear, damage that surface. So when they bang that seal and it's damaged the seal anyway. The axle housing itself is spotless. Down in there, look at that. There you go, look at that. Nice. This is a marine clean water based. Uh, they say you can mix it as a one-to-one -one solution as long as it's warm water and they're just gonna brush it on leave it for about a minute two minutes then hit it well, Metal ready not that much Okay, that is the second coat of metal conditioner ready for paint Fuck off. All right, we gotta wait three hours till I can apply the second coat. That's the finish in a semi-gloss. I need to polish these ball ends up. I've already done one. There we go. Beautiful. Reason I've wrapped it in plastic because I am using a cutting compound and the crap goes everywhere and I don't want it on the new paint. So all I'm using is just cutting compound, a bit of sponge, a little Milwaukee buffer. Trusty old Dremel. Da, da. Bearings are ready. What the fuck? Damon? Peter? Hand Solo and Chewbacca are in the freezer again. Nah, it's alright Mick, just don't talk to them. Yeah? Yeah. yeah, it's okay. yeah. yeah. Maybe they're just waiting for a mate. Yeah, waiting on a mate. Yeah. Oh, while I'm here, can I get a rum can off your Chewy? Oh. 
Thanks, man. Time to install the bearings. It's been in the freezer all night, remember? Get it started. That's time. And just repeat the process for the other three. All you gotta do is just tap it in. Just tap it in. Hey, just tap it in. Look what I just found in Jamon's metal art collection. Da -da 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 -da. Perfect fit. Okay, it's time to put the seals in the freezer. Right, yeah, I'm ready for some seal clubbing. So yeah, a little bit of WD. Not like that, not. Just on that area. That is perfect. Okay, so what I'm doing, I'm just cleaning up all these components, just wire wheel on the grinder. One thing I like to do is this shaft here, bit wet and dry, clean that up, well you can wire wheel it, but clean it up as best as you can. These bearings, you want them to be a nice sear that slides on. Now, it will get a little bit tight down there, but you want it to be a snug fit, but a slide on fit. Because if you don't, what will happen is when you go to set the shimming up, if you've got to pull this apart again, this bottom cage gets caught in the bottom of the actual swivel hub and you'll damage it. You know, if you try smacking, I've seen a few videos on YouTube where they're getting hammered and belt up. All that's doing, you're going to damage your new bearings. So to prevent that, make sure the bearing slides nice on there first. Then you can do it by hand. You can easily just give it a jiggle and these will move by hand. Other thing is, once I clean them out with my Dremel, the cones that go in there, when I'm setting them up for shimming again, I don't put the cones in. I just put a flat hardened flat washer on top. I stagger them, tension them down to 70 foot pound, top bottom. Okay, happy happy. Wire wheeled. Flapper wheel. Old flapper wheel, not a new one. Old ones give a better finish when you're just cleaning up areas. So yeah, any any burrs on your steering arms, I've cleaned all them up. Tapers down in here, had a Dremel with a wire wheel down there where your cones go, little Dremel with a wire wheel, get all the rust out of them. Uh, yeah, so that bit is restored. When I was an apprentice for a major OEM company, if I was caught wearing these, I would have been taken out the back and flogged. How times have changed. But, must admit, it's freaking awesome. So yeah, packing bearings, you've probably seen it before. Old school way. I just put a little bit like that on there, palm my hand, work it in. Just on that one area until it starts popping through the other side. Just like that, you see it coming through. And just keep doing that, work your way around to the next bit. Okay, so the hub's on. I'm just going to measure these shims up. Mickey's micrometers. Four of the point fives right there. I've got point fives in there, two of them, one top and bottom. So I just put the hard washers in there first, not the cones, because if I do have to pull this apart again, those cones get jammed in there, you're gonna try and get them out again or get a hammer and start flogging stuff that we've already cleaned up all the surfaces. No. So I find this the easiest way. Now 
running a 0.2 shim, top and bottom. Okay, so we're sitting over there for... That's about where I want it. I've seen some where they want you to go 9, even as far as 15. I guarantee you, at 15, you'd feel that bear and be notchy. You know, it's just way too tight, because even there, that's... That's pretty good, you know, that's... It's a little bit of effort to move that, so I'm going to leave it at that. Oh, it's amazing what you find when you start cleaning stuff up. Check this out. If you can see that, someone's taken a grinder to that surface. And the chisel marks. And see that bow there? So it's not going to shim properly because you've got a chunk of metal sitting under the shim. Well, this will have to be the end of the uh, video for the week because I need to order another one of them. It is too far gone because once I slide the baron on, which slides on beautifully, but we don't we, we, we don't want it to do that. We just want a nice snug fit, but yeah, this is actually loose. The inner race is loose on that. Even bring it out there, like look at it. Oh, no good. Alright. Oh. Uh, so I'm gonna order another one of them. That's no big deal, I can still assemble all the top, get that other hub on. I can actually just sit this in there for the interim just to keep everything together. New Year's Day. What's Mick doing? Grinding shit in the shed. But I've finished now. I'm gonna have a run. So this has got to be by far the worst axle I've seen on a cruiser in a long time. Uh, just for the fact that a lot of the components that we're replacing shouldn't need replacing ever. But because they've been installed incorrectly and people taken to them with a grinder and all sorts of weird and wonderful shit, stripped out bolts, heli coils in a lot of the housings. Moving on, we've got all new parts going in, which is good. So hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, because there's going to be more videos coming. I don't know if I can upload them every single week as I work away. I'll try my best. Might have to be a fortnightly thing even probably maybe even a monthly thing every four weeks try and cram as much as i can into a 10 minute set all right catch us later nah mick just don't talk to him mate yeah just it's all in your head man <laughs>